Something that I could really appreciate in any comic, manga, video game, or movie is a distinct art direction. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sort of beyond sick of the high school environment. It was one of the worst times of my life, so I don't really get the obsession of having the main focus and setting be a bunch of high schoolers doing things. And to be fair, it's not just basic Japanese high school. It could have different motifs like wizards, exorcists, demons, etc, etc. And there are times when, honestly, it's not that bad. Soul Eater still has a special place in my heart. For lack of a better way of describing it, I love the aesthetic centered around the Halloween vibe. Witches, mummies, pumpkins, grim reapers is stuff that really distinguishes Soul Eater. Achisi Okubo's art style is also another compartment in which you can watch my video if you want to see what I really think about his style. But all of that aside, that's sort of what I want to take note of, the art direction or the aesthetic. It can really help separate one's work from all the other pieces of media doing more or less the same thing. And a manga that has an aesthetic that I find super fascinating is Doro He Doro. This manga is so distinctive that if anyone were to ask me for a suggestion of something that isn't mainstream with a trippy setting, well, I would first suggest Blam, but Dorohe Dodo is right up there with it. Long story short, Dorohe Dodo is a story about a man named Kaimon who has a lizard head and amnesia. With the help of his friend Nikaido, they both find magic users in the hopes of finding the person that changed his head into a lizard and hopefully regain his memories while doing so. This is honestly a tame description of how the story is because things sort of go bananas. And the person behind this crazy story is Q Hayashida. Kyu Hayashida is a Japanese manga is mostly known for her work Dora He Dora and is currently working on another series called Die Dark. She's done other one shots and has contributed to some anthologies, but other than that, nothing's really known about her in terms of her artistic career. She's honestly pretty elusive when it comes to her personal life, and honestly good on her because I swear some people are just a bit too nosy in the affairs of manga artists these days. Anyway, I'll look at her inked work and I call it work while pointing out things that I find interesting about her style. I know some people take umbrage that I describe some art styles like this, but I'll say it again. Her style is pretty messy, but I stress that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. In fact, I feel like it directly correlates with the entire setting of Dora Hedoro, which is the whole and the magic realm or dimension. This place looks dirty, like straight up. Things look as if they're deteriorating, molding, eroding, falling apart, all of the above. If you look at the background in some of these panel shots, you'll see crud and grime all over the floors and walls. And the way Hayashida achieves these effects is through texture. If you're a digital artist, one can easily overlay some grunge and graphite textures over what you're drawing. However, I refuse to believe Hayashida is a digital artist until proven otherwise, because I can't find any video evidence of her process or her drawing or anything. But going by what I'm seeing, it all seems traditional. So assuming that's the case, she achieves this eroding texture through the tried and true hatching and cross hatching. But more often, she uses stippling. Stippling, in short, is just the process of drawing using small dots or specks. In the world of Dorhe Dodo, the magic users don't run on mana per se, rather they run on smoke. And stippling alongside smudging is good for drawing the effect of smoke, but even more than that she really utilizes those texture techniques for all sorts of scenes. There's a moment in which Nikaido and Kaimon are searching a building and the power goes out, and during the scene Hayashida goes full tilt on the amount of texture used. It's scribbled as all hell, but the readability is what's most important in the scene. You can still make out Kaimon and this mysterious figure in these two panels. It honestly nails a horror aspect, although I will say Doro he Doro isn't really scary, nor do I think it's meant to be. And despite characters wearing masks that look like this, I think it's all part of the cohesive aesthetic and setting, but I'll get back to the character designs in one bit. Going back to the heavy use of texture, it also extends to the panel layout itself. When Kaimon bites people's heads to get them to talk to the man inside his mouth, trust me this makes a lot more sense if you read the manga. The usual panel gutter structure changes into this ink splotch format. It makes it seem like we're in a different space outside of reality. And in more surreal cases, things go even further off the rails. I'll bring this point up later in her color work because oh my god. And it goes without saying, but as you read on, you will slowly acclimate to this trippy setting. A good example of this is when N gives Fujita device with all the info on all magic users, and this is what it looks like. Much Mushroom analog sticks with a teeth bezel. This is the world of Doro He Doro and I honestly love it. And going back to the characters wearing masks, I sometimes forget that these are even masks people are wearing. But sometimes I just think that this is what people look like. Think the Xenobites from Hellraiser, that's just how they look. Sometimes it's their mask and sometimes it's not. Because honestly, I still don't know if this magic user is wearing a mask or it's just their actual head. I, I don't know. It's been a while since I read this part of the story. Again, that's just how this world works. I mean, there's even a guy that has a tube of tooth 
toothpaste as a head, or at least I thought initially until they revealed that's just an extension of his magic to make copies of people. That is to say, when they take off their mask, they just look like normal people. And that all aside, one thing I also want to take note of is that there is barely any wasted space in any of the panels. Most manga will sometimes have moments in which the background isn't really needed since the space the characters are in at the moment has already been established, but Q Hayashida goes in on almost every single panel. There will also be these splash pages that are packed with detail, and sure most of these pages look like they take place in torture chambers, but that is sort of commonplace in this story. But you know, I think these shots are necessary to remind the reader that this is the type of world we're in right now. Because the characters are never shocked when they walk into rooms like this. And despite how twisted, dark, and morbid this world is, the characters again are still very human. It takes some time since the characters are looking like this, or this, or even this, but the way they act and talk is so normal sometimes despite their character designs. And and that's something I want to talk about for a bit. This story has a lot of characters, however you won't ever mistake any character for someone else. Well, there's technically I guess one, but that's sort of a spoiler I think. And honestly, I like how strong Haisha draws and makes the woman in this story, no way being my absolute favorite. She's strong and very capable, and the kicker is, her magic is healing magic. I also like how there's no fan service character, at least in a conventional sense if you know what I mean. And sure, you'll see Nikaido wear something like this once in a while, but you usually see her wearing something like this. And the entire and family has pretty unique designs too, like there is not a single character that doesn't have something distinct about them to separate them from the rest. Just like her inked work, her color work has to be traditional, and again, until I'm proven otherwise or see an actual video process of her work, I can't imagine her coloring to be anything other than traditional. I've looked at a lot of manga artists and the many unique coloring styles that are out there. Tsubasa Yamaguchi has a very classical way of coloring her work, and Ishida Sui has an abstract twist in some of his work, but I think nothing comes even remotely close to how unique Hayashida does her colored work. If it can leave pigment on the page, it is usable for her. I mentioned earlier that she could sometimes go off the rails when it comes to usual paneling, but for her colored work, all bets are off. Like, look at these pages. From what I can make out, I see masking tape, ink splatters, things that look like coffee or oil stains, band-aids, and this part looks like it could be latex or rubber, or some sort of leather maybe. It's pure madness. But once again, the readability is still there. I'm never questioning the order in which I have to read the panels. Despite how crazy high she could get, a fundamental understanding is there so the readers aren't lost. Because it doesn't matter how cool or unique one's style is. If it's not coherent and the viewers are lost, then I think you really need to reel it back. Of course, she can render in a more tamer manner in pieces like this or this, but I think she shines best in a more chaotic style. It's hard to describe, but this screams Dodo Head Dodo. I can't even lock down a consistent medium she may be using. It looks like it could be markers in one illustration, watercolor on this one, crayons on another, gouache, acrylic, or even oil pastel. And considering she attaches fabric and material in her work, I guess you could say that her work is a mixed medium type of style. And for those who don't know, it's artwork in which more than one medium or material has been used. Think something like collage, assemblage, and in some cases, installation art. However, I will say it's not just mindless chaos, it's a bit controlled. In a series of consecutive pages, there will be continuity of cohesive color. For example, this series of pages obviously has a main color being yellow. It's all over and it's the most saturated color. But Hashida will splatter some yellow outside of the panels and out of the lines, and will even have this glaringly strong red on Noi. While these series of pages have a purple, blue, cool hue, Overall, Q Hayashida is an artist I know a lot of people have asked me to look at for a while. The issue is that I wanted to either finish Dodo He Dodo or at least digest a good chunk of her work before doing a full blown analysis on her. I feel that's one thing to look at her artwork by itself and another thing to look at it with context. But after getting through Dodo He Dodo and a bit of Die Dark, I finally felt ready to tackle her art. Her inked work is a godly mess that perfectly exemplifies the grimy, cruddy world of Dodo He Dodo. The backgrounds are filled with filth and Haishida gets this effect through using a lot of stippling and cross-hatching to create texture. She also uses this texture in many scenes, such as moments when things go dark, or when we see uses of magic, or when things go even further surreal. And it goes even further when the panel layouts also receive the same effects, and her coloring is even more chaotic than her inked work in my opinion. For her colored pages, she goes full speed when using any sort of material or medium. Things are colored outside the lines, things that look like stains are evident, and things are just all over the place. Also, I really like this effect of smoke used for a colored work. However, despite the madness, things are never lost to the viewer as there is a level of cohesion in this chaotic process. If you want to support her, you can collect the Dora Hei Dora manga which is completed with 23 volumes, and there's also Die Dark which she's currently working on that has 6 volumes at the moment. And if you only care for her artwork, there's the Dora Hei Dora art book, Mud and Sludge which I do have and I will do a short or video on me unboxing it soon. 
And other than that, I've got nothing. I want to give you guys more avenues to support her, but again, she's pretty elusive, so I don't think she has any social medias as far as I'm concerned. If you guys know something, please let me know in the comments. And this is a bit of a side note, but besides Dodo Hidoro, Die Dark, some one shots, and a few contributions for some anthologies, I should have also did an adaptation for Machin X, a game developed by Atlas, and that will be leading on to my next artist I'll be looking at, hopefully, very soon. What is good, YouTube? It's been a while since my last artist analysis, and it's been over a week since my last video. Um, needless to say, I did a sort of a self-imposed break for the artist analysis um, because um, these videos do take a lot out of me. You know, writing the script, finding the material, recording the audio, then editing the video and splicing it up does um, it takes a lot out of me. So um, yeah, but I think um, I've sort of got my. Um, I didn't lose my passion, but I sort of have a idea of the next few artists that I want to look at. And I'm all, I sort of already started the script for the next one. Um, and if you guys didn't know, it was Kazuma Kaneko. And what better time since the Persona 3 remake it got announced. So I think um, it's sort of nice to dip back into, you know, an Atlas artist and, you know, sort of to keep up with the current events going on with again with the Persona 3 remake anyway I I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting again there's a lot of stuff happening in real life too so I'm trying to balance this and a job and personal life right now so I apologize for the long wait that I made you guys have to go through um, anyway if you like the video please like the video um if you want to comment comment and if i'm missing any information just you know put in i don't always respond but i do look at them um subscribe i'd very much love it if you guys did that and yeah my social media links are in the description my patreon's there if you want to support it's been pretty dead but i have plans for it since i've been busy um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching the video Again, I will try to adhere to a schedule, or rather, I'll try to adhere to some sort of schedule. Um, again, I'm working on the next Arts and already, so hopefully it gets done within a month, hopefully. But until then, I might just do some unboxing, maybe some art videos, maybe some speed paints, and so on and so forth. Anyway, again, as I said before, thank you for watching this video, um, and I hope to see you guys in the next one really soon.